doing today? We are going to Campbell River to help out a friend with their motor, putting their cylinder head back on their engine. I'm Taryn, this is Logan, and this is Max. Our life rarely goes as planned, and this story is no different. But we are determined to rebuild our beautiful steel boat, even stronger than she was before. And we're bringing you along with us. This lovely Dutch family had been having engine issues for a while, and Logan offered to help them get things figured out so that they could finally continue on their way around the world. So we're just doing all the, well not all the prep work, it's already been done. We're just doing some measurements and uh, cleaning up the bolt holes. So what happened? Why do you have to do this thing? Because uh, the head gasket went. What kind of engine do they have? It's a Yanmar. <laughs> a model that I'm... That they got so many little models for everything, but it's Marine uh, 4JH... Something, something. Something, something. Yeah. 4JHAE, I think. Which is a little bit older, but it's a good engine. So, that's why... I, it's getting repaired. He's also uh, giving listen lessons to me, so that takes up. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just That's explaining nice. things yeah, yeah. so that. It, I had a mechanic who uh, renewed all my, all my electronics. He said, well, "I want to help you." He said, "Well, it will cost you double the price." I said, "Why? Because you have a small boat. You're always on the spot where I want to sit." <laughs> 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 and I sp I have to spend half half of my time explaining why I do things. Yeah. So it's. And he says, for me it's like breathing, but if you were out, it would take at least uh, two times uh, the amount of hours, so I said, oh. Yeah, I totally agree on that. That's Makes what sense. Logan says about me helping too. <laughs> <laughs> After a while it becomes second nature and you don't think about it. So yeah, then yeah. when you have somebody there and you have to explain it, you have to go through that whole thought process of how you're going to explain it to somebody that yeah, it doesn't, doesn't know. know. Yeah. yeah. Okay, do you want to introduce yourselves? I am Berber, and this is my son, Teddy. Say hello, Ted. I am Linda. And I am Mariska. Do we have one more member of your sailing family who's not in camera we right now. Do, we do. Um, the one member that's working very hard with his head in the engine room at the moment uh, is um, our father and husband, Chart. Yeah, and, and we are sailing with the four of us for almost four Five. years now. Uh, across the oceans, five, and a lot of other teddies, um, and we're sailing uh, across the oceans, uh, and we're here in Canada now. Where did you guys start out? Uh, back home in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands. So what route did you guys take from the Netherlands to get here? So from the Netherlands we sailed down the European west coast, then we crossed to Madeira, which is part of Portugal, then we went to the Canary Islands, from the Canary Islands to Africa, well actually only Cabo Verde, which is part of Africa. From there we went to South America uh, and we visited French Guiana first and then a former Dutch colony Suriname. Suriname. From there we saw almost all the Eastern Caribbean islands, from Trinidad Tobago all the way up to the BVIs. And then it was hurricane season, time to sail south again, so we visited all three ABC Islands, it's a Dutch, also former Dutch islands, Aruba, Bonaire, Curaçao. Then we went to Colombia and then through the Panama Canal, just in time before Covid hit. <laughs> and that changed everything. Uh, but first of all, uh, after we were quarantined for 67 days on our boat in Panama, we made the long passage to French Polynesia. So in uh, Panama we were quarantined, yeah we were basically stuck, we were also already checked out of the country so we were officially like homeless or stateless or whatever you want to call it, we were not in Panama anymore but we were also not allowed to leave officially, it was a very confusing situation and um, but then uh, after 67 days we were so sick and tired of it and we heard that inter-island travel was possible again in French Polynesia so that made us decide to leave 
uh, a little bit of ahead of the reopening of Polynesia. So we were on the ocean for 42 days and then arrived on Nukuhiva. Uh, on the 1st of July we were quarantined for another 5 days. So <laughs> our total quarantine was 115 days. Wow. And then we were finally allowed on land. It's a long time to not be on land. Oh, yes. it was. We had to, you know, we did a we did a hike the first day. Well, a hike. It was only a walk of an hour, and no, we were just tired, you know. Yeah, Everything yeah. hurt. It. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Well, and then um, we spent in total nine months in three of the archipelagos in French Polynesia, because we were on our way to New Zealand. But New Zealand was closed and is still closed. Uh, so at some point, we thought, well, we we don't we don't have the means or the funds or the intention for this trip to take um, uh, a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if we ever want to see our home country again, we have to take some different decisions and uh, go for a different route. Um, so we decided instead of keep going west or waiting for things to reopen. Um, to think about a different solution and a lot of things crossed our minds selling the boat putting the boat on transport flying back home and just leave the boat there until things have resolved or something like that but uh, the only real option that felt good was uh, try and see if we can take a different route home so uh, we decided to try and see if we could get into the US Hawaii to be specific which was very difficult if you're European and you don't have a, a visa which we didn't Applying for, for a visa was not possible because we could not fly anywhere, no embassy was open. So we decided to, um, to take the difficult path, uh, but it turned out to be successful after four months because with help of our uh, ambassador, um, of our embassy in the US, um, we were the only sailboat that was allowed into the US without a visa. So we felt really special. And that took us up to a, a new route home, so that was Hawaii and then we went up to Alaska. And then after Alaska, we came down uh, to uh, Canada, did the inside passage, and arrived here on Vancouver Island in December. Wow, so you picked like a pretty stormy time to come through the inside yeah, passage. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> but, we, but we loved it. Yeah, 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 we absolutely loved it. There was no other sailboat around. And because it was still COVID time, a lot of um, <laughs> villages were closed. Oh, right. But because we had the time, we also took the time, and then we found that uh, in a lot of villages where it that, that were that, who were officially closed and we were officially not welcome there but when you just have to sit out a storm you know there's always somebody coming up after uh, one or two days asking uh, are you all right on board there and uh, so uh, a couple of times uh, after four days or so they asked us uh, do you maybe need some groceries or do you want to stretch your legs or do you want to stretch your legs yeah and then they allowed us on land and that actually brought us uh, very nice encounters with lovely people yeah and what are your plans now what are you guys doing now uh, now we are planning to put our boat on transport over land um, and then uh, to go to the other side of the country and then sail back uh, from, um, through Greenland and Iceland uh, back to the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah that's going to be a big adventure. On the one hand it's uh, a bit sad because it won't be sailing the whole time of course and we had the idea of circumnavigating. But because it's become uh, such a different trip already, we decided just to, to just take it as it comes and go with the flow and um, uh, and also see every uh, new thing as a big adventure. And so the whole the whole road trip will be something that we didn't plan for and never thought about. But what's actually going to be quite special, and uh, the more Canadians we we tell this, and the more people say, "Oh, I've always wanted to do that, uh, uh, drive across the country," and they never did. So we get to do that, which is quite special too. Definitely. Yeah. yeah I think it's, it's kind of like the Canadian pilgrimage that most of us never end up doing. So. Yeah, yeah. 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 Pretty cool. Yeah. So if people want to follow your journey across the country, um, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, well, we have a, a website. Um, it's the name of our boat, which is a bit difficult to <laughs> yeah. pronounce because it's Dutch, but I'm sure Taryn will find a way to put it in. Uh... Yeah, I'll put a link up in the corner right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we are making movies too, not as successful as Terran and Logan yet, but um, um, it's mostly realistic movies about what life as a family on a boat is like. 
Um, uh, and uh, it would be really great if you follow us on our YouTube channel as well. Um, and if you like to be the first to see the movies, and I'm writing articles as well, uh, so it would be nice if you become a Patreon. Uh, but you can find it all on the website. Perfect. Awesome. Well, I come from England. I am a special crew member of sailing vessel Zeltzerik, and we are really happy to be in this video. Thank you. <laughs> and Sailor, Sailor Ted will have his own uh, Instagram channel. So you can follow that too. Yeah. Perfect. I will link all of those things in the description below. <laughs> Yay. All cool. right. Awesome. Too late, it's all fixed. Is it? No. No. We got the like head on. There's lots of stuff in there now. Bolts back together. Did it go then? It went well? I guess. We'll find out when, uh, when the rest of the parts get here. So it's not running yet? Or maybe I won't find out. Who knows? We were treated to an amazing Dutch stew for dinner and couldn't have been more grateful for the opportunity to spend some time with lovely people. Back on the boat, it was time to keep going on the boat projects, and that means it was time to start cutting into the bulwarks so we could get to work on replacing the deck plate. But first we needed to install some temporary deck beams. both exciting and very nerve-wracking. Do you have to cut the pulpit off or does it screw off somehow or something? Uh, it's got some set screws in it, but half of them are stripped and it looks kind of like... That one's missing. It just has some epoxy jammed in the hole. <laughs> so I might have to cut them off. Which is fine. I don't really care. That pulpit's going back on though, right? Yeah. Yeah, but we'll cut them at the mounts. Right. Down here. Once that's off, then we can start looking at cutting a section out and just having a look in behind it. Right. Yeah, I guess all that's left now is to start cutting. Are you going to plasma cut it or zip it? No, I'll do it with the zip disc. Okay. Because the inside, the whole inside is full of fluid film and it's flammable. Yeah, so. I was going to say you need a fire watch. Well, I don't want to have an explosion. Oh, fair enough. So I'll cut out some like big sections. We should be able to plasma cut it. Um, after I get some sections cut out, but Kay. yeah, like some of the metal's still perfect. Really, hey? But it's all the stuff down at the bottom. Have you gone through the deck at all, though? Not so. Far. I'm sure there is in some places. But not so far. No. Well, we might have a change of plans to um, save ourselves a bunch of work. I don't know if you can see, but like up in here, the steel is totally, like it's perfect. And down here it's flaked, but it's not, 
it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I mean, mind you, this is up at the top part here, um, which wasn't bad to begin with. Uh, it's much worse back there. But, I think we're going to cut the inside of this off, this piece here, and expose it all the way and look at the deck, as well as the shape of the outside of the hull, like the outside of the bulwarks, and try to save ourselves some work by so just repairing uh, sections instead of doing the entire thing. So we know for sure there's two sections on that outside piece that we're going to have to repair regardless, but... Yeah, potential. but they're right in the center. Yeah, which is the lowest point for the water to go, so... That's right, um, and I'm not sure... Um, because this is still 4 mil plating here, mm -hmm. which is... It's still fairly thick. Right. And that's fine. Uh, and now that we've got the wet blaster all functional and we're going to need to blast all this anyway we might just cut this inside bit of the bulwarks off because we want to get rid of that mm -hmm. and um, and only replace the sections of bulwark and deck that we need to man that would be amazing so fingers crossed that's how it looks the rest of the way down yeah that would save us I, I think it would save us a lot of work it would save us months of work because we wouldn't have to tear nearly as much out of the boat potentially yeah potentially um and being able to uh zip cut this bit i'm gonna get a metal blade for the for the top um for like a circular saw like a skill saw yeah I'll get a metal blade on that and we'll cut the top off with a metal blade because it's like that's really thick. That's, that's cool. at least three sixteenths on the top or four <clears throat> mil or whatever it is. It's the same side here was only three mil. And then yeah, that would be unreal if we could do that. And, and really just save ourselves a hell of a lot of work. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like look at this. A little bit of flaky. That's fluid film and then rust. Yeah, yeah. solidified fluid film. Is it just solidified? It's not like a bunch of rust mixed in. Oh, it's rust mixed in, yeah. When you look down there, you can hardly even see anything because it's just rust. Mm -hmm. Like, there's probably that much, um, like, flaking and stuff in there. Crazy. But it's mostly off of the inside and just this bit of outside here. Like, up at the top, it's perfect. The whole top that I cut off was, like, it took a bit because it's really thick still. Right. That's surprising, hey? <laughs> Yeah. I thought the outside would be worse than the inside because of just the way that the boat's shaped. It's just crazy. Yeah. And it would be nice to keep that outside bit on there too so that we'll, we'll have less chance warping. of the deck warping when we... Because mm -hmm. we're going to have to cut a strip out of the deck in places. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's gone through back there on each side. Like at the widest point where we have holes? Yeah. Yeah. And possibly in the um, aft cabin in the locker, like way at the back. There's a couple of spots where I can see um, like rust on the insulation. Right. And that's never a good sign. No. <laughs> hmm. Well, either way, I'm going to ride this high right now because this is exciting, potentially. I'm going to pretend like it's definitely exciting and I'm going to... Be excited about it. Yay! Yeah, that is. That's super exciting. It may not be worth it once we get it cut open, but we'll have to cut it open anyway to see. Right, so we're not losing anything by doing that? No, we're really not. Cool. Well, that's good news. Yeah, it's really good news. 
Thanks for joining us. Next week, we dig deeper into the Bulwarks and into figuring out what this project is going to look like. But if you would like to catch up with us in real time, we post weekly updates on our Patreon page. See you next week.